Welcome, 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 y'all, and thank you so much for joining me. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how I make my chicken video tacos. Video de pollo. Guys, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and, you know, turn on all those post notifications so you'll be notified every time I post. And guys, remember, remember, remember to like, comment, and share this video. Let's get it. Okay, y'all, so I got all my ingredients that I'm gonna need for my chicken video right here. Um, just going through, I got my cheese, this quesadilla cheese, and uh, mozzarella, I'm gonna use that as a blend for when I actually make the tacos. Of course, I got torn, corn tortillas. Um, these are yellow corn tortillas. Um, a stick of butter. Um, I have cilantro, that's gonna be for the tacos. I have yellow onions for the actual uh, making the video. I got a uh, red onion for when um, we make our tacos. We're gonna need Roma tomatoes. I have anywhere about six, uh, seven of those. And then I have, these are uh, your uh, allspice whole seeds. And um, this is your uh, black pepper. Um, got the cinnamon sticks and we have cloves. Now all of these are um, whole. I did get those out of the Mexican section in Walmart as well as the guajillo chilies that you're gonna need. Guys, I would recommend going to your local Mexican market if you have one. Um, also got arbol chilies out of uh, Walmart in the Mexican section. Um, but yeah, if you have a, a Hispanic grocery store, visit them because they have the fresher uh, uh, peppers, the dry peppers. Um, Walmart actually did have some really good ones this time, but you wanna make sure that you get some that are uh, that are, you, you can tell through the bag, hold on yeah. Through the bag, you can tell that they're kind of pliable. That just means that that's what you want. Um, you want some that aren't super dry and everything. That's gonna give you the better flavor. Um, I was gonna get some ancho chilies, but I was unable to make it to Mexican uh, store. So that's what I had to get. And um, instead, it's got ancho chili powder. Um, that's just gonna have to suffice because I do like ancho chilies for the smokiness. So guys, got some white vinegar, got some uh, olive oil for browning the chicken, got some cumin, got some oregano, that's the ancho chili powder, uh, black pepper, have salt, have some garlic. Um, I, do, I did like to get like the um, whole cloves, but they just didn't have any at the grocery store. So I just got the minced garlic instead, which is gonna be ground up anyway. Um, very important. Got the chicken bouillon, guys. This is the brand that I prefer simply because it has a, a less salty flavor. There's no MSG in here, and I just think that the flavor is better. And you can go be a little heavy handed with this versus the uh, Nor. The Nor is a lot saltier, and uh, yeah, I just really prefer this over everything. All right, y'all. So, without further ado, we're going to get on in this recipe. And um, yeah, I'm going to show you how to make this. And just, um, this is. A more ingredient heavy version of the video tacos but um if you want a simpler crock pot version of the video whether it be chicken or the beef just let me know in the comments and i'll definitely post that recipe as well but all right here we go all right guys so what i got here is i have about four bone-in chicken thighs and i have about five chicken legs all right guys so um with these, I also have some boneless, skinless chicken thighs, but I'm not gonna worry about browning those right now, simply because I don't like to put a hard sear on skinless chicken, because I feel like it takes away from the chicken later on and makes it tough in a way that I don't like. So the only thing that I'm browning is the ones with the skin on. All right, so guys, I'm just gonna start off here. Just gonna give it a light little drizzle of olive oil in the bowl, and I'm gonna come behind that with um, a tablespoon or so of salt. Then I'm gonna come with uh, some black pepper, also about a tablespoon or so, like that. Don't really need much more. This is just gonna um, help flavor that skin up whenever I drop it down and brown it. All this is going for uh, depth of flavor. My hands are clean. I don't have any gloves, I ran out, um, but just gonna take this and give it a toss. You know, what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna do a heavy, strong boil on this. It's gonna be kind of a low simmer 
um, somewhat like a braise. Um, it's going to be on the stove top. So, I just take and go through, stretch out the skin on everything. I'm going to take the skin off later on, unless you want to leave the skin on. Because I know some people, you may not want to make a taco. I'm making tacos with this, but you can just do videos. And you can have um, just your chicken in the broth with some onions and uh, cilantro. Maybe some cabbage if that's what you want. Um, but uh, I'm making tacos, so the skin and the bones are all for flavor. So I'm just going through making sure I stretch out the skin so that I can brown it off and that none of it gets kind of left out. See that? That's how it's hanging. I just try to stretch it across all of that. And I'm going to put it face down in a hot pan and let it sear up. So yeah, I have my pot heating up. Um, this is a pretty large pot here. Um, I am going to be making a fairly large amount of um, uh, video. And so I have about, um, in total, I have uh, chicken that you saw, plus I have probably another two pounds of chicken. So in all, that's probably about six to eight pounds of chicken. Um, if you're going to make this recipe and you're not going to use that much, you can just um, kind of uh, reduce the amount of water that you use everything else I would pretty much keep it the same and um just kind of like uh just eyeball so much because I'm just going to be making the um uh, the sauce for the consomme and that you can kind of back up on depending on how much you have but uh you can still kind of go more or less water just depending on how thick you want your consomme but um I know that the bone the bones and the skin is going to add to the richness of the broth so um that also plays a factor. So, um, pro tip, whenever your uh, oil starts to run freely across the pan, it's hot. That's about hot like I want it. So I'm gonna take this um, and I'm gonna go inside down. I'm not gonna worry about browning the thighs on both sides. I'm just gonna brown the skin. Like I said, guys, when it comes down to chicken, the meat itself, I don't like to put a hard sear on because I think it, it just doesn't taste as good later on. Make sure your oil is hot. I'm gonna just sear the thighs off first. I'm not gonna crowd my pot. Then I'm gonna take them out and sit them to the side and then I'm gonna sear my legs. Like I said, make sure it's hot. Don't be a skit, don't a skirt, don't be a skit. Don't be afraid to um, to let your grease get hot, really hot. And don't be afraid to think you're gonna burn your uh, chicken. Um, you want that really hot so that it, you know, it really browns that skin up and everything so that that helps impart all that delicious flavor into your consomme because that's what you want. All right, guys, so I'm gonna let this brown up for a second. Okay, so um, I pretty much brown those on all sides. Not quite perfect on all sides like you see right here. Doesn't really matter. You just want to get that skin brown as much as you can. Not really that and super important. So I'm going back in with the thighs. Right back into the pot. Remember I told you I had some boneless, skinless thighs? Those aren't going in right now. Only these. And I'm gonna come behind that directly with some water. So this is hot water, so that's why I cleaned up the camera. But um, just going in slowly with enough water to cover all the chicken. Now I do have a kettle, so that's why the water is already boiling like this. So um, in case you're wondering why it's boiling so fast, and I'm just adding it. But I'm just adding that right now, just enough water to cover. 
and I don't want this chicken to be at a rolling boil at all. Well, I ain't gonna say at all, but I don't want it to be at a rolling boil um, consistently throughout. Um, like I said, it's gonna be kind of like a low simmer. That's how I'm gonna cook it. I just think it preserves the integrity of the meat. It helps everything to um, get very flavorful. I'm gonna reduce the heat. Took it way down. And then I'm gonna come with my uh, chicken bouillon, my air box. Like I said, I don't really measure this. If anything, I probably you can go for probably a few tablespoons. It's you can, like I said, I can tend to have a heavier hand on this than I could, like say, nor seasoning, um, because it's not as salty, and it does really just give you a nice roasted chicken type flavor. So I'm just gonna kind of stir that around. Guys, I am gonna add more water to this in a little bit. But for right now, this is how much I water. I just need enough water to cover it. Right now, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna cover this, and then we're gonna go and I'm gonna make the sauce. So, um, yeah. All right, guys, so while I have my bone in chicken simmering um, on the stove, I'm gonna go ahead and start making the sauce that's gonna go in the consomme. All right guys, so right here on the board, I have some guajillo chilies. I'm gonna be using more in this chicken video recipe than I would in my a typical beef video recipe, where I would typically use about seven to eight medium uh, guajillo chilies, um, just depending, these are kind of small. I'll, um, I'm gonna use a little bit more in, these, in this recipe, probably about 10 to 12, and uh, some of these are small, so I'll count the, I'm like two is one or whatever. So basically, because I'm talking too much, um, I just want to go through. I have scissors. Some of you may have a knife. They usually have a top on this, but this particular brand I already have the tops removed. So um, you just go through, and um, I'm just going to cut these open down the center. And whenever you get guajillo chilies or any chilies for that matter, that are dried whenever you're doing a recipe like this. Look for the ones, especially like you go to the Mexican market because they're usually pre-portioned in the bags and they're not like um, packaged in the factory like these were. But um, you uh, look for the ones that kind of like are soft and pliable. They don't really crack whenever you move them because those are gonna be the better tasting when those are fresher ones. They're all dried. So look in here, I cut it down the center. I'm gonna take, just get the pods, the seeds out. These aren't really um, spicy. Guajillo chilies aren't. They, if you smell them, they don't even smell spicy. They smell like kind of like raisins um, when they're dry like this. They just have a fruity uh, flavor and a, uh, of course a peppery taste to them that's just, uh, that's gonna give your uh, consomme a good flavor. But anyway, just go through, depending on where you get your peppers. Um, these were prepackaged. This is the uh, El Club Mexicano, Mexicano brand that's sold um, at Walmart. And um, for the most part, like I said, they chop the tops off and they don't seem to have as many seeds, but if you get them from Mexican Mart, usually they're gonna be whole and they're gonna have all the seeds. So just go through and do about 10 to 12. I'll probably do everything that you see on the board and then um, I'll come back. Also guys, I have some Arbo chilies that are prepackaged as well. This is from Badia. You can choose to use or not to use these chilies. These is these are spicy. Okay, this is where the heat's gonna come from. Um, if you do, if you're not a person for spice, just disregard these all in all. But you do if you see ancho chilies, which I do not have today because I could not find them and I didn't have time to go hunt them down. Um, get the ancho chilies as well as guajillo. But these can be omitted. I'm gonna use probably about um, 10 of these, maybe a couple. Yeah, I'm gonna use 10. I'm just gonna chop the tops off. I'm not gonna worry about um, getting all the seeds out. I'll probably shake it just to get some of the seeds out, but I'm not gonna worry about getting them all out. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna come back once I have these um, de-seeded and uh, ready to go. All right, guys, so I've gone through and I've seeded my guajillo chilies and my arbo chilies. Um, I did ended up seeding probably about, 
I just cut the tops off of these. I shimmed it a little bit to get the seeds out. If they didn't fall out, I wasn't that pressed. Even with these, it's not a, it's okay if like you got a couple seeds stuck in there, like it's not gonna hurt anything. You just don't want a pot full of seeds pretty much. Um, but anyway, I did all that. So what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna rinse these off because yeah, uh, even though these are prepackaged, you still wanna rinse, see look like, what you did, I don't know. But anyway, I go through and I rinse them really good, really, really well before I cook them. And then, um, yeah, so I'm gonna show you uh, just a couple of the other ingredients and we're gonna get started on. So that's all the fresh veggies I have. I don't have any whole garlic cloves um, right now. These are just the other ingredients that are about to go on the sauce, stuff like that. So um, yeah, we're gonna transition on over to the stove. Hey, baby. So we got um, the pot, we got a pan on the stove. We got, we got a little bit of oil in it, getting ready, getting nice and hot. I'm gonna go ahead, the stove. Get a bit of garlic in here. If you have clothes that are broken down, you can use about seven or eight, like the individual small, I think they're called clothes, hell, I don't know. But um, a considerable amount. The reason I went ahead and throw the garlic in there, it's not gonna have time to burn because I'm just gonna let it go for a second. I'm only gonna let it go for a couple seconds. Then I'm coming in with the tomatoes and the onion that I quartered up. It's the yellow onion. You can choose to use the white onion if you want to. You can use a red onion, it doesn't really matter. Um, the yellow onion is just a good, mild cooking onion. It's gonna go medium high to high heat right now. Um, just kind of get this a stir around until your tomatoes start breaking down. Y'all, I'm cooking ghetto. I got a spatula. Uh, yeah, I got a spatula instead of a spoon or whatever. It don't matter. It's all the same thing. You're gonna push these. You're gonna push these around. Gonna push these around. You feel me? All right, so. Just kind of let that go. Like I said, the garlic won't really burn because the tomatoes gonna start breaking down so all the liquid from the tomatoes is gonna kind of save the bar of garlic from burning so it's okay to throw it in there first if you like I said have the clothes you're gonna wait until the tomatoes break down then add it in there but since I had the minced garlic might as well you know I'm passive up on a chance to get my flavor brown that garlic up brown your veggies that's flavor bro I don't care what nobody say y'all watch Food Network what uh what uh Amber Rell say brown food tastes good she ain't lying. <laughs> Once those start breaking down a little bit, guajillo and ancho, I mean, all bowl chili. So if you have ancho with you, put your ancho chilies in there. So get those in there. Let them feel the heat. I know it look kind of crazy, but it ain't. <laughs> kind of moving the uh, onions out the way, so to speak. You don't have to put your onions in right away, but I do. It's all gonna get blended up anyway. With the heat on medium high to high, and um, there no being no water in here, this is almost like almost like frying your uh, tomatoes down. 
just feels slightly. Okay, so once your tomatoes start breaking down again, somewhat mushy like that, what you wanna go ahead and do is start adding your seasonings in there. So, I have whole seasonings here. I'm gonna go in with about this, with about this much, uh, these are cloves, allspice, the roots and the seeds is fine if that's what come in the back, black peppercorns, ground cumin, you can use a good bit of this. I like to be heavy handed with it. That all in all is probably a ridiculous amount, probably about a quarter of a cup. So um, just know you can, if you're not a cumin person, you don't like the taste of it, the smell of it, then you might want to go back a little less, but I would definitely recommend using it. Cinnamon stick, if it's about this, about this wide, you want one that's going to be this thickness. You don't want too much cinnamon flavor. Um, about this about this long if it's if it's any longer than this break a piece off but anyway I'm gonna just break it in half like that throw it in there all right so now I got my ancho chili powder because I don't have any ancho chilies so I'm just gonna go in kind of heavy handed with it because I definitely want that smokiness in there all right I'm gonna go in with just probably about two three tablespoons of vinegar I'm gonna count one two Three. I want to get us a stir. All right, remember it said I was cooking on high, medium high heat. I'm gonna reduce my heat down to low. Medium low depends on how your stove top is. I have a glass top stove, so it holds a lot of heat. I do not want this to be at a rapid boil for too long, and it takes a little while for it to even calm down. So once I got it where I want it, I'm gonna take some water. Probably about that much water. Not necessarily cover it up, but just to have it something to simmer in. Remember, we're gonna be adding water to our whole pot again anyway, so we don't have to, uh, it doesn't really matter if you do add a little extra here. But um, just be aware that all this is gonna to have to go in a blender, and you don't wanna to have to strain any water off before you put it in the blender, because you're gonna lose flavor. All this right here needs to go over into your pot of chicken. So, like I said, I just use the least amount of water at this stage, because I just wanted to be able to simmer, but I do want to, uh, I don't want to um, fill my blender all the way to the top. So, that should be enough for it to simmer. So once it starts simmering like so, just want to make sure that <clears throat> everything's kind of in there. Then I'm going to take my lid, just going to cover it up, and I'm going to let that go. I'm going to let that go for about 10, 15 minutes, then I'm going to come back, we're going to blend this up, then we're gonna go back to our uh, consomme. Okay guys, so uh, I've let that simmer for a while, probably about 15 minutes. Um, you see everything is nice and soft. Um, gonna be easy to blend up. Um, this is my blender right here. It is a Ninja um, uh, kitchen system, power, chef, whatever you wanna call it. My point is, if you do not have a good blender, which, you know, everybody don't. You know, not everybody can afford one, so people just don't have one. When doing this recipe, just notice that if you use the uh, the large um, peppercorns and allspice, uh, just know that you're going to have to either blend multiple times, or you're probably gonna have to strain if your blender is not strong enough to break it down. Now, this blender is strong enough, but I still blend a couple times so that I don't have any hard pieces. And um, when in doubt, just strain. Strain your sauce before you put it in your consomme. I usually, um, when I did the other bit of your recipe, I strained that sauce um, after after I removed the meat. Um, that's completely 
up to you. I mean, some people like the little meat pieces in there. But if you're going to do that, if you're not going to strain later, strain now. If you're scared that your peppercorns aren't going to break up in your blender. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and just add this into the blender. So, I'm just going to take a um, bit of the time. And go right in. After I'm done scooping it in there, I'm going to tilt the pot up and over and put the remaining sauce in there because the remaining liquid because you don't, that's all flavor. You don't want to just let that go. Definitely want to pour it on over in now. That's also going to help it blend because the onions, the peppers and tomatoes by themselves become too thick and they won't want to blend without that extra liquid. I'm making a mess. It's cool. You're probably gonna make a mess. Came up out the trenches, then I had beat a few bodies like Goosey. She said you work on my show, you my coochie. I had to sing to this bitch like Lucy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bitch got a bad word on her nice. Down, put it mail. Start out slow. I'm gonna turn it up. I'm gonna turn it up. Okay, y'all, so I did blend this on high um, about three times at the highest settings um, just to make sure because don't want no crunchy pieces. No crunch. Amen. Amen. So basically, once that's done, which it should be done. Woo. I'm going to take this. And depending on your blender. Let me see if I can show y'all. So that's about the consistency. It oh lord. I'm like I got a piece that got hung up, so I gotta blend this again. But um for the most part, you see that? Yeah. So okay guys. So here's our chicken that's been simmering on the stove for a little bit now. And um so Basically, the skin, the bone, and of course the chicken itself has helped flavor this thing right here. So that's my bone-in chicken. I actually am, like I said, gonna go in with more uh, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Um, what I have right here, I'm just gonna go put those in. All right, y'all, so I've um, added chicken thighs in there. In the process of me adding thighs, I also did turn the stove back up because, remember, I had it on a low, low simmer. Um, and me adding these chicken thighs in there, of course, caused that simmer to completely dissipate. So I do want to bring the temperature back up just so I can start to um, boil again, and then I'm going to drop it back down and add more water. As you can see, the bone and the skin and everything, all that fat, it's starting to really separate from there. You see how that, that's what's on the surface. That's what's gonna help us cook our tacos. All right, guys, so right here, booyah. Oh, wait, I can't see. Booyah. This is our uh, blended uh, sauce with our guajillo chilies, all of our spices and our tomatoes and onions. So right now, I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna add that all into here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Then, what I didn't, what did not make it into the pot. Mm. I'm just gonna take, add a little water to my pitcher, swash it around. Gotta get all the excess off the lid and what's in the pitcher, because you don't wanna waste. I'm gonna use everything we got. Just dump the rest in there.
All right, I'm just gonna give this a stir. <clears throat> like so. And this is really, if you, if you, this is really enough liquid right here. I'm just gonna add a touch more water. Not really a whole lot more because I don't want it to be too thin, even though you could always reduce it down a little bit anyway. But once those chicken thighs cook out and the excess fat goes in there, it's gonna get a little thicker. So if you do want your consomme on the thick side, just pay attention to how much extra water you add. Um, so with that being said, I'm only gonna add a touch, not even a half a cup, because I am gonna simmer this again and I'm gonna simmer it on low heat, guys. So with this being chicken, this is not gonna take as long as it would to uh, break down short ribs or um, oxtails or a uh, chuck roast. So go ahead and cover it back up. Ooh yeah. The heat has come back up. Once this begins to bubble a little bit, which already seems like it is, um, I'm going to, because I have a glass top stove, I'm gonna go ahead and reduce my heat. So just know that you don't, if it comes to a rolling boil, no harm or foul, but just remember to reduce your heat once you cover it up because um, the extra addition of the chicken thighs and everything. You don't have to do it like this. If you wanna go all bone in or no bones or whatever, you can just know that using the bone in chicken is gonna add to the richness of your consomme, which is what beer is about. That's what beer is all about, is the consomme, the dipping, or if you're just eating it, you know, on its own without the taco. So, um, it's, I can already see it's starting to boil. So with that being said, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, reduce my heat. And because the stove I'm working with, this thing will boil, 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 especially whenever you cover pot up. So I have to take my heat way down. But if you have like a classic stove, medium low should be good. Um, not all the way low, but medium low. I have to take mine pretty much to low. And so, because like I was getting at a minute ago, because this is chicken and not um, the beef, it's less fibrous, it's not gonna take as long to cook. So once you got a low simmer going there, I'll only give it an hour and a half at the most, probably before your chicken is ready to shred. You don't wanna overcook it because chicken will disintegrate after it's cooked for so long. But um, just once it's fork tender, ready to shred, you're going to um, stop it. So that'll probably be a max hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes. So we'll come back then. We're going to take our chicken out, get the bones out, and um, we're going to separate the consomme. All right. Guys. Also, guys, one thing I forgot to mention is um, I do. I am going to add this into the pot, like right now. Um, it is uh, Nelly and Joe's Key West Lime Juice. This is the only lime juice that I really would recommend outside of fresh lime juice, fresh limes in your birria usually i would cut up lines and let it simmer with it but the only problem is eventually the bitterness from the skin will get into the consomme and i don't really like the way that tastes but this right here is the truth so i'm going to add anywhere from probably about an eighth to a quarter cup of it pretty a good amount for um the size pot i have and um yeah so i'm just 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 forgot about that so all right y'all so i've been simmering probably about an hour and a half or so um here so that's what it looks like right now. Pretty sure, I don't know. This is one of the boneless thighs. Pretty sure, hold on. As you can tell, it is tender ready to be shredded. So I try to keep these as whole as possible until I get them out of the pot because I don't want to have to fish with pieces too much in the consomme. So I don't want the skin too much coming off of the, uh, the other pieces before I can get it out. <clears throat> Cause I want to be able to separate that pretty easily the rest of the meat see it's gonna be hard for some but you know i just want to keep the skin intact if possible 
and keep just larger pieces just makes it easier. We run the city. You probably just want to go in and uh, get you a small spoon or something and taste it because I can almost guarantee you that it um, is it doesn't have enough salt. So from there, you just want to taste. Just a little bit. You can usually tell, and then. You just want to add salt add salt <clears throat> a little at a time until it's adjusted and don't my thing is because I'm going to bring this back to a rolling boil just to separate the fat which is already on top but don't season to where it's salty enough to where season to where it's almost there because it's probably going to reduce a little bit more and then it's going to be a little bit saltier. So, cause, so if you make it to where it's just like, mm, that's enough salt, no more, because it'd be too salty, then it's probably going to be too salty anyway. So just season enough to where it's flavorful, but it might seem like it take a little bit more, it'll probably reduce down and be perfect. So with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and do what I just told y'all. Add a little bit of salt in there taste it and when I get it right I'm going to bring this up <clears throat> into a boil and then that's just going to separate the fat and then I'm going to skim the fat off the top as much as I can put it in my fat separator and that's what I'm going to use to uh okay y'all so didn't get all of it not going to get all of it it's not the point the point is to get most of it so as you see fat separator is here it's got most of the fat on top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to drain <clears throat> most of the broth the regular broth back into there then I'm gonna skim it one more time just because it's kind of mixed in. And then I'll be good with that part. So this is the meat that we took out of our pot. It's the boneless and the uh, bone in. So basically all I'm doing right now is just get rid of all of, you know, the bones, the, you know, little gristle parts or whatever, because this is what's gonna fill our tacos. So um, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Not much work to do. Boom, easy. Just gonna like and uh, like, ooh. even though it's kind of that's the skin, <laughs> y'all can't see it. So, I'm just throwing that to the side. Um, probably gonna get in here with my hands when I come back. I'm gonna show you the finished result after I pulled everything apart and uh, shredded it. All right, y'all. So, this is what the chicken looks like. Um, once I shred it up, like I said, this is all dark meat, which y'all have watched, y'all know that. So um, you can make these chicken tacos with uh, white meat, um, breast meat. Um, it is going to be a little bit different. Um, I would suggest if you do that, that you bake the chicken instead of boiling it or simmering it in a sauce because just because um, breast meat tends to get a little bit stringy whenever it goes in. That's just my opinion. Um, but if you're just somebody who can't do dark meat or you just really health conscious, you know, that is what it is. But anyway, y'all, this is chicken shredded. We got our consomme ready. We got our oil over on the side. Got a pan heating up. So it's time to make these tacos. All right, All right y'all. So um, we're about to make our tacos right now. All right, so in this bowl, like y'all saw at the beginning of the video when I showed you the list of ingredients, um, we have the we have um, the quesadilla cheese that I showed you, and we have just shredded mozzarella cheese. 
Quesadilla cheese is for more of a melty type thing. And then the mozzarella, of course, is for the actual like cheese, hooli, stretchy type thing. Yeah. And um, we got our chicken, of course, that I just showed you. And then right here is the uh, oil that we're gonna use to cook our tortillas. And um, so yeah, stove should be about hot. I'm just gonna um, take a few spoonfuls. You can be kind of generous with it. I probably could have added a little bit more than that. It's gonna take. I kind of got my stove at kind of a high heat because these are gonna kind of go fast. I cooked one side. That's just a little piece of chicken that came off the. Cook one side. get it where I want it, that's gonna be the inside. So, it doesn't have to be nice and charred. I just, then I go ahead and I flip it, swirl it around in that oil. And while that's starting to cook on the other side, I go ahead and grab my cheese, kind of spread my cheese out across. like a sou. And when it's like that, when you do the chicken, you don't do the chicken all the way across. Just take the chicken, do it on one side. Now you can stuff them if you want. Go ahead, close the door. You can stuff them if you want, but you know, just get a little Whatever you do, I just like to put it on one side. It makes it easier to fold instead of, you know, you overstuffing the whole taco and then you can't fold it. That cheese on that hot tortilla will start to melt. Now, I'm probably gonna end up switching to a spatula because I, I usually tend to tear when I try to do the tongs. But yeah, hold on just a second. Fold over like that and press, hold to that cheese is, acts like a glue and you don't have to hold no more. It's all right if it's coming out the taco. I stuffed that one pretty good. You want that crunchiness. Flip it, ooh! I don't know if y'all can tell, but that's exactly what you want right there. You see that? That's perfection in my eyes. In mine eyes, that's perfection. That joker crunchy too. She crunchy. That's why I don't like to flip it in the whole pot of consomme like some people do because it wets the tortilla and you don't get that crunch. All right, y'all, so I'm gonna turn down my stove just a little but I wanna keep it hot and then I'm just gonna roll these out. It may not mean nothing to y'all, but understand nothing was done to me. So I don't plan on stopping at all. I want this shit forever, mine, never mind, never mind. I'm shutting shit down in the mall. It's Sunday, girl, she the one for me. And I ain't even planning to call. Like a spray ankle, boy, ain't nothing to play with. Started off local, but thanks to all the haters, I know G4 pilots on a first name basis. In your city, faded off the brown. Me know, she insists she got more class. We know, swimming in the money, come and find me. Nemo, if I was at the club, you know I balled. Chemo, drop the mixtape, that shit sounded like an album. Who'd have thought a countrywide tour would be the outcome?
come Labels want my name beside an X like Malcolm Everybody got a deal, I did it without one Yeah, nigga, I'm about my business Killing all these rappers, you would swear I had a hit list Everyone who doubted me is asking for forgiveness If you ain't been a part of it, it ain't you got to witness Bitches, it may not be nothing I'm just standing up there, what's done to me? So I don't plan on stopping at all. I want this shit forever, mate, never mind, never mind. Shut this shit down in the mall. And Sunday, girl, she the one for me. And I ain't even planning to call. I want this shit forever, mate, never mind. I never miss the whistles in the building. Ain't no question who about the key. I used to have little dreams. All right, guys, this is the end result. As you can tell, very, very, very similar to the beef beer tacos that everyone is familiar with and that I've made before on our main channel, hashtag the cannons. If you haven't already, please subscribe to that channel. Also, guys, please like, comment, subscribe to this channel, guys. Share this channel out. We're trying to get this channel monetized and get it going so that everybody can see these recipes. Look at this cheese pool. Ooh. All right, guys, thank y'all so much, and I'll see you on the next one.